Now, most people who are following along uh, won't be dealing with process dissociation. That's an advanced topic and something which is relatively difficult to understand. But if you have been thinking about process dissociation and you're also still puzzled about moral reframing, then you're in the right place. You're in the right place. You remember that a while back when we were thinking about moral foundations theory and moral reframing, we came across this puzzle. Moral reframing seems to work, but the motivation for trying moral reframing was moral foundations theory, the use of the questionnaire for, and the use of the moral foundations questionnaire for identifying cultural variation in moral psychology. Now, what we encountered there was something like this. Um, if you imagine that these are people who are most socially liberal and these people who are most socially conservative, using the Moral Foundations questionnaire seems to suggest that people who are socially liberal do not care very much about the so-called binding foundations. Uh, so things like purity, respect for authority, in-group loyalty, but care very much more for the so-called individualizing foundations. So care, care and harm uh, and, and fairness. Sorry, so care and fairness. Care versus harm. Oh, good. Right. Uh, whereas as you go across to the more socially conservative, what you find is that they tend to treat all of these binding foundations more or less equivalently. Now, the justification for moral reframing was that if you express climate change issues in terms of fairness or care, then they should be more appealing to liberals than to conservatives because liberals care more about those binding foundations relative to the other. The problem with this argument is really twofold. Uh, one is that the Moral Foundations questionnaire doesn't look like a good tool because it fails to manifest scalar invariance, as we saw. So we can't really trust the socially conservative, socially liberal uh, cultural variation. It's unclear whether or not we should accept that. But let's suppose for a moment that we put that objection aside, then we run into what I'm calling the Joanne Lowe, Lars and Joseph objection after three students who came up with this objection, I think independently. The evidence on cultural variation says that socially conservative participants tend to regard all five foundations as roughly morally equivalent. There you go, you can see that, that thing at the end. Um, and that being the case, because they tend to regard them all as roughly morally equivalent, we shouldn't expect that shifting from one foundation, for example, care, to a different foundation, for example, purity, respect the purity of the environment, that shouldn't actually produce an increase if we follow this theory. So we then have this puzzle. Moral reframing seems to work, but the theoretical explanation for why it works doesn't seem to be right. Now, earlier we looked at this puzzle and we considered various possibilities, including the possibility that some of the moral reframing effect may be to do with cues about the source of the message. Thinking about process dissociation allows us to add a distinct but compatible possible explanation for why moral reframing works. So you will remember that Goronsky and colleagues introduced a process dissociation response where they distinguished between three parameters, how much you care about outcomes, so how consequentialist you are, uh, how much you care about not breaking moral ru rules, for example, not harming people, um, and how much you have a generalized preference for inaction. And if you remember from earlier, they used process dissociation in order to create estimates for each of these parameters under different conditions. So for example, as you increase cognitive load, they found that that doesn't affect how consequentialist you are, but it does affect how much you prefer not to act. You prefer more, more, more to act. Now that's what they found in that earlier study. In the present study, Luke and Goronsky, instead of looking at low versus high cognitive load, they looked at people who are more socially liberal over here on the left, to people who are more socially conservative over there far, far away on your right. Uh, and then what they did was estimate each of the three parameters. So how, how consequentialist you are, how much driven by rules you are, how deontological if you like, and, and what sort of preference for inaction you might have. Now I'm not showing you the other cases because for the uh, rule-based and the preference for inaction, the conservatives and the socially liberal people didn't seem to differ at all. So the, the line across the graph was flat. What you can see here though is that there is a line, a regression line, and it's sloping downwards. And in fact, it's a highly significant slope. So no one's saying this is a massive uh, effect, but though it's a highly significant effect, conservatives 
are slightly less concerned about the outcomes of actions than people who are more socially liberal. As Luke and Goronsky themselves say, on average, conservatives are less inclined to accept harmful actions for the greater good than liberals, and liberals are more sensitive to the consequences of a given action for the greater good than conservatives. So now here's a neat question. I wonder whether this could explain maybe all of, or just part of, those moral reframing effects. Maybe this finding is part of the answers. And if that was, we'd have an advantage, because now we're not relying on the moral foundations theory or the questionnaire, so we save ourselves from a lot of fairly complicated potential objections. What we need to do to back this up then is to go back to some of the reframing effects. So here's a study from, I think this is Kidwell and colleagues, where you see here, this is the message that was supposed to be framed in a liberal way on your left, and over there on your right, that's a message that was supposed to be framed in a more conservative way. You kind of see that because this one's all about helping caring and reducing harm, whereas the other one's about, you know, being with people like you, doing your civic duty and so on. Now, it's just possible, I think, it's not obvious, but it's just possible that the framing could be here over this side, tilting people to think more, well, you know, if I'm going to help and care, then I've got to make some sacrifices myself in order for others to benefit. So that's kind of like a consequentialist thing. There's something bad, there's something being taken away from me, maybe some violation from a conservative point of view of some property rights that I have, something like that. But it's for the greater good, so it's really worth it. Uh, whereas on the other side, that, that kind of tendency is clearly absent. So there's no uh, civic duty, responsibility, following advice. There's really no reference on the right to consequences. So what I want to suggest, based on, of course, just looking at one case of moral reframing, it would be important to do a fuller survey, is that Luke and Goronsky's discovery that people who are socially conservative tend to be less sensitive to the consequences of actions than people who are socially liberal may play a role in explaining why we get moral reframing effects. And if it does, then we have found a further contribution towards solving the puzzle of moral reframing.